Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Dumaris and I'm with Michelle Dirks and she's going to talk about food and medicine as, in terms of how it's healing the body, correct? Thank you. Food and herbs is medicine, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Since we're surrounded tongue by it. <laughs> and yeah, and my um, other program is called and my it's called Voice of Nature and um, that's my product line. So my educational um, component is uh, Food and herbs as medicine. And we have these beautiful <laughs> herbs here with us. We're going to show all the different ways to prepare them and use them. And you want to start with these are daikon greens? Um, these are daikon greens right here, actually, daikon microgreens. And I absolutely love fresh uh, vegetables. And not only that, I love the actual nutrients that are in a lot of these vegetables and a lot of these herbs that are growing right now, bursting up through the soil and I absolutely love wild foraging. <laughs> so today we actually have something very interesting, using herbs that we are very well used to and also using some wild herbs that you might not have heard about before, like dandelion greens uh, or wild garlic pesto. Uh, sorry, wild garlic greens. So today I'm doing a wild um, greens pesto. And so the ingredients are pretty interesting because instead of using our pine nuts, we'll be using um, half a cup of walnuts and half a cup of pumpkin seeds. So these are toasted pumpkin and seeds. And these are toasted, okay. dry roasted on a skillet before using because they actually bring out the flavor much more and they're easier to digest and they actually taste much more delicious. So I'm also using quarter of a cup of hemp seed. Hemp seed I love because of the nutrients, the omega-3, omega-6. And if you're vegan, it's a great substitute for Parmesan cheese and yeah. pesto. So it's, it's absolutely so wonderful. So it's You could just sprinkle it on your salad. You can sprinkle on everything. And mm. even when you have it um, blended, you can actually sprinkle it on it as well. So it's extremely yummy. So I use two cups of greens. And I was using basil. So that can be cut um, or it can be chopped. So usually have a scissors mm -hmm. and I like to chop my herbs. Um, I chop them from the top and because they'll grow much better again. Also, yeah, I just read that you can't you can't really chop these things to death because they'll die like immediately, right? <laughs> so it's better to actually just take some leaves and let them grow back again. And the top leaves are really important to chop off. And again, they make really beautiful, um, you know, decorations Garnish. at the end oh, and garnishes. That. So when you um, we're going to take say. Uh, a cup of basil with a cup of parsley. Parsley is extremely high in iron. It's really, really nutritious, mm -hmm. really good for you. And some dandelion greens, like, so you're saying So yourself, instead of just putting basic basil in your pesto, you're putting, adding parsley. Adding parsley. And you're adding dandelion greens. And I'm adding dandelion greens. Okay, you so could, you can weed your yard. <laughs> And use your weeds. And three or four. As long as they're not sprayed. Right? As long as they're not sprayed. Organic is better. Uh, I'm also using wild um, garlic mustard. It's everywhere. It's this plant with a little white flower right now flowering everywhere. And I love to use that as well. Where do you find garlic mustard? You, in the woods. You will find them in any yard that has dandelion. Oh, uh, okay. Snuck in at the side, in embankments. Um, they love wooded areas. So as you walk into woods, you'll just see these large leafy vegetables. They're considered invasive, and oh. they are absolutely highly delicious, filled with vitamin C and wow. calcium and zinc. And the same with, you know, a lot of the vegetables that come up right now. The actual dandelion greens are very high in beta carotene, so is the actual um, dandelion flower. flower itself. Now, later in the show, we're going to actually tempura the flower. <laughs> I know. So we're going to have the first time in my life eating a dandelion flower. So again, what I like to do is have fresh vegetables, eat as much as possible. And again, the uh, ingredients are um, half a cup of um, walnuts, half a cup of, um, sorry, pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. seeds, a quarter cup of hemp seeds, and then two of your favorite greens. So it could be basil, 
um, parsley, um, basil, kale, basil, some people dandelion, use spinach, spinach um, anything you really, really love. You can add in some of your microgreens, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, some olive oil, one or two cloves of garlic, and um, <laughs> there's usually something else in there I've forgotten about, and just blend. So and then these are actually the seeds? I want to show you, because we're going to cut and put a little of these in the pesto at the very end. So these are microgreens, OK? So this is organic soil. Microgreens are really great for the liver this time of year. In Chinese medicine, liver is considered to be spring energy, and green is usually associated with spring energy. So, so having that upward these, energy, right? Exactly. Upward mm -hmm. energy makes you feel good from the winter we've had. Just to have these in your food is just quite amazing for the nutrient contents in them. Mm -hmm. So this is my little um, tray that I'm showing you that you can actually do at home. Any little tray that you have left over, just put some organic soil in it, okay? I'm using um, True Love Seeds. Um, it is a partnership with Mill Hollow Farm that I do my um, herbs with, and they create amazing seeds. So True Love Seeds from Mill Hollow Farm. And all I do is, this is broccoli rob. So you don't have to sprout these first in water? You just nope, plant them you in the dirt? Absolutely, you just put them straight into the wow. dirt. This is so. This is really great for people who haven't had a garden before. Ha that haven't Easy. had gardened, yeah. that also uh, don't have a garden, that would love to have these nutrients in their home. You can do it straight in your kitchen and a great tool for young children to learn how to yeah. grow microgreens. So great this, classroom activity. Great classroom activity. They can watch all the different seeds and everything growing. So you just sprinkle the seeds around. Okay. So these are what kind of seeds? These are broccoli rob. Broccoli rob. So you can do microgreens in any plant that's um, small? That's small, absolutely. Oh. So um, the daikon is very delicious because it has that pungent, sharp taste. The broccoli rob has that kind of kind of pungent, slightly bitter taste too. And then the actual arugula um, has this just lovely sweet taste. So you can choose whatever you want. People like to mix and match. Oh, Once I always see them in the store, <laughs> you know, as a package of microgreens, yeah. but I didn't know really how to And do it. they can be expensive. And so this is a way of doing it at home yourself. So all you do is just water your soil nice and rich. I like the little spray bottle. Spray Kids will like doing great. that. Yeah. And you could have little trays with little markers on what seeds you're doing. It doesn't like sunlight straight away. So uh, this is a nice little organic unbleached paper. So how long do you have to keep them in the dark? Uh, you can just, it doesn't necessarily need to be in the dark, just away from sunlight mm -hmm. for about three to four days. And make sure that you, plants love water, so make sure you spritz it when it needs it and make sure that this is wet. Within about three days to four, this is what happens. It just pops up this much and your, <laughs> your paper will pop up with the seeds. <laughs> and just lift the paper off, spritz, Okay, that's so neat. And just keep it by your window. And so when it is, this will get a little higher. Uh, I do this in a cooking class or one of my educational classes, which is called Food and Herbs as Medicine, uh, a few weeks ago. And people are telling me they still have them growing <laughs> within two weeks and they're still chopping. And when do you, what do you harvest You them? can start harvesting it now. So with the scissors, you just take little pieces. Some people like to harvest it all at once and then they just rinse it and put it in a bag and have it in your refrigerator to use for breakfast lunch, dinner, on top of it, anything. Fabulous on salads. Wow. Fabulous on our pesto. And so these are daikon greens. Daikon greens. So if I kept growing them, would they grow a giant daikon? <laughs> Is that I, what? Actually, yes. So oh, if okay. you kept growing this, of course what's happened is going to happen is the seeds are going to get longer and longer and the root won't have enough room to grow. But yes, if you have a nice garden, you can take these out. So these are your sprouts and they will start to grow into your 
wonderful daikon. So it's different from sprouting. You're not putting the seeds in a jar exactly. and turning the jar upside down. You're actually growing. You're actually the seeds. yeah. You're growing the seed, and they find that they're extremely nutritious and beneficial for you when they're about six to seven inches high, oh. and that you chop. And so they're all called microgreens. They're all any, called, exactly any plant that's mm -hmm. small and. And this is just a great way to really enhance. So your if you live in an apartment where you don't have any sun at all, do you put them under a light bulb? Or? You could. I actually tried that, to tell mm -hmm. you the truth. And what I noticed is it was a window way down. All the green started to grow. You might even <laughs> see it. It started to grow slanted towards the sun. So yes, you could actually do it with just a light above it, or even near your kitchen that has a low light. So this or, is something anybody can do mm -hmm. in their house. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be a really uh, savvy gardener or know that much about gardening. You can just simply put the seeds in the soil and keep them wet. Exactly, and just um, we use them like this and just sprinkle. Oops, we don't put want them that. in pesto sauce. What other th things do you do with them besides like sprinkle them in um, salads? You could sprinkle them in salad. You could put them in your juice. You can also um, I put them on um, my grains. Uh, I love to make miso soup and. Um, I love them at the end on miso soup. Nice. They're delicious. On pasta, uh, when I do a really nice pasta salad, so they're sprinkled on everything. <laughs> and just to let you know that it's becoming quite popular, <laughs> that dandelion greens are actually now in miso. So you can buy miso, nettle, dandelion greens. And this is uh, South River, right? South River. Okay, okay. South River, dandelion miso. And they miso. say three dandelion greens a day, okay? from now to midsummer will keep you well for a year and a day. It's an old Irish. <laughs> it's an old Irish Since thing. you're from Ireland, you can give us those Irish tips. So you can chop them up and honestly nobody will know they're in your salads. <laughs> uh, they're very delicious and really help bile production and Yeah, they're really cleansing to the liver. Very right? cleansing to the liver and also very uplifting and also a blood purifier. So lots of things. Now you can things. saute them with onions. I've done Delicious that before. Delicious sauteed with onions mm -hmm. and everything. And then the actual um, beautiful flowers themselves are extremely high in beta carotene. And you also use the root. And I also use the root. So this is really interesting. This is a plant that all of it is edible <laughs> from the from the actual root to the flower. So not only We'll be tempering this in a few minutes. Not only the flour is tempered, you can just take little bits. I'm going to take one. And For also the yellow parts. The and put them on top of your pasta. And you're getting <laughs> fabulous nutrients with oh it on gosh. top of your pasta. You have to make sure they're not sprayed it with any GMO exactly. glyphosate in your front So yard. just if, if you're anywhere, please inquire um, if it's sprayed. And make then if sure it's not, not yeah. you're make okay. Make sure they're wild. Exactly. That's, that's the one thing. So traditionally, um, Dandelion root is really good for the digestive tract. Um, it's really good uh, as a form of nutrients to help with the microbiome. It's actually, they say it's anti-aging. So. Great, so when we come back from our commercial break, Michelle's gonna show us a little bit about how to make dandelion tea, or some of you know dandelion coffee. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Hip and pop. Casinos by the ocean. Hip and pop. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. 
Now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Rowan College at Burlington County. Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And have many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. Rowan College of Burlington County. Your path to success. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. What does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are? What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done, once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes, together. Welcome back. I'm with um, Michelle Dirks. We're talking about dandelion coffee or dandelion tea. She's going to describe for us what she does with dandelion root. Okay, well dandelion root is the tap root that is from the dandelion flower and has one tap root that goes all the way down. And so you've got people are like, what is dandelion coffee? It actually tastes very similar to coffee and is more nutritious. Okay, so you can harvest it yourself by digging up the dandelions or let somebody else do it for you. And it has to be dried, washed, dried. Um, some people dry in a dehydrator and some people um, just let it dry naturally and then roast it in the oven. Once it roasts in the oven, it has this incredibly nutty flavor and is so delicious and what I do then with it is I put water on a stove or in if you have a nice glass um, kettle okay and I add about a teaspoon into about two cups of water maybe two teaspoons and bring it to boil and simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes it turns the most beautiful shade of kind of rose color and beautiful taste, beautiful smell, and so good for you. So good for your body, so good for your teeth, bones, hair, everything. So, so roasted dandelion root. Roasted dandelion root, extremely good for you, okay? Um, so also other plants can be added into teas. So this would be more like, um, it's called a decoction, that you would cook it for about 10 or 15 minutes. But because of the beautiful flowers, growing right now okay we have our beautiful pot right here and we have violet flowers so these are this is another wild gorgeous flower that's growing right, right now the violets and the violet greens are extremely high in vitamin a okay so i'd like you to watch it's a beautiful tea i know so you can just get your greens you can do the same with actually dandelion tops and dandelion flowers and their leaves but um this is like I know. the happiest tea I've ever seen. <laughs> so purple. I know. So it actually starts to change color. I think I had the lid somewhere. So those colors will go into the water. Those colors will go into water. the water and you just leave. This is called an infusion where you just, well, we actually had the water first just because of um, what we were, just because of time. But I would just like to show you the color. 
Uh, this I did yesterday. So you could probably make a uh, cold drink out of this. You could make right? a cold drink. So this uh -huh. is it here, infused with a little bit of lemon. Okay. Oh, nice. See. So this looks so refreshing for the summer. So you can add a little bit of that over your desserts. Um, it's really, really yummy. You can add a little bit of rice syrup or lemon. Uh, honey you can and make lemon. a lemonade. Uh, and delicious add lemonade. This to lemonade. Delicious added to um, sparkling water. Just a real nice with the flowers as well. Okay, so this is turning slightly. Um, let me put this in like this. You can also just slightly. So that will turn to this color eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. So it starts to turn like a little shade of blue. And again, you want to make sure they're not sprayed. Uh, again, rinse that them they're off. not sprayed, you can rinse them off and mm -hmm. pat dry them with a towel, okay? Just to make sure there isn't bugs because insects do like them. But at this time of year, the insects the haven't really found them <laughs> too much. Yeah. So another great way of enjoying these plants is fritters or tempura, okay? So how do we make tempura? Um, so some of you have had just onion rings. Onion rings are considered tempura. Exactly. But if you go to a Japanese restaurant, you'll have um, all sorts of different types of vegetable tempura. And so Michelle's going to show us a little bit about how to tempura dandelions. And tempura is extremely uplifting. Um, it is, again, great for liver energy, spring energy. So I just have a flower, just whatever flower, if you're Is that a whole wheat flour. pastry flower? It's a whole wheat pastry flower. Okay. I added kuzu, which is from the kudzu root, about two tablespoons. So it's if you were doing it for a family, three quarters a cup of flour, a quarter cup of kuzu, uh, two to three uh, teaspoons would be perfect. And that gives it the kind of consistency of a nice batter. So you want to make it like sort of milky, but not real thick. So you can test it by putting a vegetable in there and see if Thank it's Thank you. And how you can stick. test it. OK. Um, also, sparkling water makes it very, very nice. Cold sparkling water makes it extremely. Um, yeah, if you don't have the kuzu, you could just do the flour, the water, and the salt. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it too thin. You want it a little bit. Um, Some people put beer in their tempura. Yeah, beer, cold mm -hmm. beer is really delicious. How do you know if it's done? We'll watch. Pop straight to the top. So once it, the actual one tiny little piece of the tempura batter, once it floats to the top straight away, you absolutely know that you're ready for tempura. So this here is our plate of tempura that I made earlier. We're going to demonstrate so one. So this is the finished product with violet green, violet flowers. And you can see the little mm -hmm. flowers of the dandelion. She's going to dip it in the flower yep. paste. And so I'm then just going just to dip it in right now, and I'll take this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have chopsticks, you can use um, you know, a slotted spoon. That's right. Just dip it in. Bring it up. OK, we have, an we have another one. These were washed. <laughs> and I know some people use asturtiums, right? They yeah, absolutely. Deep fry asturtiums. So, Another flour to mm -hmm. deep fry. Just going to turn this. You can already see how it doesn't need very much. It gets really yellow. It gets really, really yellow. You can see the actual flour. And basically, it's done. So we're going to show you some pictures from Michelle's cooking classes that she does in Chester County. And um, also a diagram of the dandelion. As Michelle, you're an artist as well. Thank you. As a chef. So some beautiful dishes and how she garnishes them with the dandelion flower. And just another quick way of using greens, um, really to make a dressing, really innovative. And this is the recipe for her pesto, the dandelion pesto. So this is apple cider vinegar, OK? So we're looking at. And we're going to just chop. And then your favorite herbs. Okay. 
and just add and this in. is what are we making now? this is just for a dressing okay. so if you want your herbs and you're like okay what can mm -hmm. I do with these mm -hmm. to actually um, preserve my herbs that I have what can I do to um, to use them because there's a lot growing right now you can just add all of these into So she's putting all the herbs in apple cider vinegar. Is this yep. straight apple cider vinegar? Straight apple cider vinegar. Okay. And what we're going to do is um, put the lid back on. Just make sure it's covered. Okay. And it stays for a week or two. You can do you shake, shake it, up, it up? Shake it up. Oh, it's beautiful. And you have the most delicious dressing for everything. For your tempura, salad dressing. Salad dressing. Um, How long do you have to leave it for the salad dressing? Um, two to three weeks you can leave it like that and it will actually last for about a year in the fridge and you will have a delicious rosemary, uh, thyme, basil, oh my dressing goodness. with violets and the violets will start turning and see how beautiful oh my gosh. color it will turn a gorgeous color and then you can add anything else in during the year and you have a great dressing this has been amazing you're amazing thank you <laughs> I just love to take this last piece out you're an artist too just <laughs> looking at the colors that develop in this and dressing. when you're doing that make sure Incredible. you don't have a, a metal lid Okay, the metal lid, the actual apple cider vinegar will corrode the lid. So plastic lids are better in this case. You could sell these on the shelf. Right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Great idea. Well, I've been using them for my, for my family. So tempura on a dish with some lemon. Garnish with some basil. And in a little bit of shoyu uh, and Natural ginger. soy sauce. Um, sprinkled on this would be absolutely divine. Dip mm -hmm. in and eat. Put it on your miso. Put it in your miso soup. Um, We're going to try one. I actually made oh. a bunch yesterday, oh, and it was devoured by a family. <laughs> it's experimenting. So tempura is really nice because in macrobiotic cooking, we don't use a lot of dairy food and. Just to have something with a little bit of oil mm -hmm. is really satisfying if you're not eating a lot of butter, cheese, or eggs. Okay, and Michelle, I can't say enough that you're so inspiring. These are beautiful dishes. Where can people find you if they want to take a class or uh, thank you. see um, a demonstration? During the summer, I am going to be teaching children how to forage, and that is with Line It Up, and it is a horse farm um, just in, in Wagenton, Chester County. In Chester County. Okay. Check it out. Check out the programs. They're absolutely amazing. And then your company name? My company name is called Voice of Nature, and I will be having my signature teas I've been creating for the last few years. They will be ready in July. Great. So these are called Voice of Nature. You can find them soon at your <laughs> local health food stores. Um, and you can also look up Michelle with what your website? Uh, the website um, is uh, Voice of Nature and my educational program is called Food and Herbs as Medicine and I have an eight-month program that's running right now and if anybody would like to join they're quite welcome to join the June session. We're filled till June. Great. So, yeah. Michelle, it's been wonderful. Thank you. I can't wait to try all these beautiful dishes and it's so gorgeous to see the colors especially in the spring. So thank you so much for coming on, and You're I'm going to go home welcome. and make some dandelion coffee right after break. Thank you very much. Thanks. See you next time.